Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining with me today here on The Pursuit. Today, I want to talk to you about a powerful thought. And if I were to give a title to this, it would be No Longer an Outcast. Think about that. No Longer an Outcast. The topic today is it's firmly planted in the understanding that God knows us intimately, has a plan for our lives, and promises to restore and to heal us. So I want to begin with a very important verse of Scripture, and it's found in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17, where God promises this. He says, I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord, because they have called you an outcast. And they said, it is Zion, or a parched place, for whom no one cares. Here God is addressing the people of Israel who, who had been through severe trials and truly had begun to feel abandoned. God's promise to restore health and to heal wounds signifies not just a physical healing, but also the removal of the stigma of being an outcast. This is a powerful reminder that no matter how society labels us, no matter how our current culture would look at us, God sees us and has a plan to heal and restore us. Let's look at another familiar passage of Scripture that would be just preceding this, and it's one that's familiar to many of us, and many believers hold it very near and dear to their hearts, and it's Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It reads this way, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. This verse, if you were to understand the context, it was spoken to the Israelites during their exile in Babylon, a, a time where, where they felt lost and forsaken. And God is reassuring them that his plans were for their good, to give them a future and a hope. They were in exile, and God is reminding them that his plan for them was one that would bring them hope and that there was a future for them. But where they were felt anything but that. This assurance that God gave to them during that time, that hard and difficult time, this assurance is for us today as well. Even in times of uncertainty, even in times of rejection, we can trust that God's plans for us are good. And he has a hopeful future in store for us. Therefore, never stop pursuing. Continue forward. Continue trusting. Continue believing. Continue pressing forward. Never stop the pursuit because God has a plan. And that plan is filled with hope. And that plan is our future. We can trust even in times of uncertainty, even in times of rejection, even in times of trial, tribulation, hardship, financial loss, loss of a loved one, up times, down times, realize he's got a plan for us. And those plans are good. And he has a hopeful future in store for us. The psalmist David beautifully acknowledges God's intimate knowledge and care towards us. And this is recorded in Psalm 139, 
verses 16 and 17, where he says this about God. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. <laughs> Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. These verses highlight that God has known us even before we were born. Every day of our lives is recorded in his book. We talk about seasons of life. Maybe we ought to be talking about chapters of life. We must realize that things are moving forward always. God has something designed for each and every one of us. A unique purpose, a unique call. Oh, sure, there's a general purpose and a general will of God, you might say, for each and every believer. But there is a unique purpose and plan for your life, just like there is for my life. And it is up to me to dig that out, to draw out what it is that God has uniquely purposed for me. These scriptures highlight that God knew us before we were even born. Every day of, of our lives recorded in his book. And this knowledge, I mean, this, it blows my mind to think about the God of the universe that my Bible says knows the very number of the hairs upon our head. That God has thought about me, has wrote my life, the chapters of my life, and when I think about the profound knowledge and care that has been given to my life by this God, then begins to tell me, I'm just not an anybody. I'm certainly not a nobody. I'm somebody to God. <laughs> I'm somebody that God cares about. I'm somebody that God took time and with great intention wrote the chapters of my life. I'm not forgotten, and I'm certainly not insignificant. You see, because I'm known. You are known by God and you are cherished by God. You're not an outcast. Oh, you're something special to God. You see, when we combine these scriptures that I've read to you, we see a comprehensive picture of God's love and His care. From healing our wounds... The things that have happened to us in our past, no matter how dark, no matter how shameful, God will heal our wounds. And God will remove from us the label of an outcast to having a good plan for our future. And knowing us intimately, God's actions demonstrate that we are valued and loved beyond measure. As, as we live in this newfound truth of no longer being an outcast, we're called to embrace a new identity. No longer should we see ourselves as outcasts, we should see ourselves as the children of God because 
If we have been born again of water and of spirit, we are no longer separated, but now are drawn nigh and made to be the children of God. Listen to this verse in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. You're no longer outside of the kingdom of God. You're no longer outside of relationship with God. But you have become, I have become fellow citizens with the saints. And watch this. The Apostle Paul says, and of the household of God. This transformation requires renewing our minds with Scripture. We, we have to. I talk about this almost every podcast. If you are going to be legitimately active in the pursuit, it will require daily time spent getting to know the voice of your Father, the voice of God. And that happens only through time spent in His Word and time spent on your knees or in a posture of prayer. This transformation, when it happens in our lives and our minds have become renewed, we will build a supportive community. We will walk in right relationships. We will serve others with love and with compassion. You see, this is what begins to happen in my life when I realize I have a new identity and I'm no longer an outcast, but I have Christ living in me, empowering me, and calling me forward into my God-given purpose. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and I'm going to read this to you from the Passion Translation today. But it reads this way, My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. Woo-hoo. you you got to get this today. Part of the pursuit is is to bring us to this place that we have a deeper revelation and understanding that I am not who I used to be. I understand the people who know me and knew me before I found Christ are going to remember some things about me. They're going to remember that maybe I was a derelict and a degenerate. But let me just remind you of something What I used to be known as, once I have given my life to Christ and picked up my cross and begin to pursue him with my life, my old life, it ain't my identity anymore. It died on the cross where Christ was crucified. It has no ability to live unless I resuscitate it and pick it back up. And I'm not doing that. You see, the essence of this new life is, the Bible says here, is no longer mine. See, my identity isn't found in me or in what I have done or even really so much what I currently am doing, but it's found in Christ. The scripture goes on and it says, For the anointed one, talking about Christ, lives his life through me. We live in union as one. Lord, help me. Lord, help us that as we continue on the pursuit, that when people will look at us, when people will listen to us, they would see and hear that one that's living within me. Because you see, he empowers my life. He is my identity. And the reflection that I want my life to show is that of Christ. Today, it is important that you and I realize that we don't have to be what our past says we were. We don't have to settle For what others said about us, oh, you'll never amount to anything. 
you'll never become anything. You don't have the right gifts, talents, or abilities. Friend of mine, let me, let me make this very clear today. Christ calls us to a place. And that place, when found in him, is exactly what the pursuit is all about. I, I want to be reaching for Christ in such a manner, not that I think I'll ever be good enough to apprehend or to catch him, but that in my pursuing of him, I realize I've been pursued by him. And when I think I've captured him, I realize that he has overwhelmed me, he has captured me, and everything that I am is found securely in who he is. Less of me, more of him, that I might decrease, that he might increase. Christ has called us to something powerful, and it is a new identity. That we who are weak and frail, we who have nothing to bring to the table except brokenness, sin, failure, hurt, and wounds, he says, bring it to me and watch me transform it as your God. And I will give you a new identity. I'll give you a greater purpose. I'll restore you. I'll renew you. I'll heal you. And I'll transform you into my ambassador. Oh, listen, today I once was an outcast, but not any longer. You see, he made it possible that I could become his child. And in becoming his child, as I've continued to pursue him, he said, I'll commission you and I'll make you my ambassador to those around you. Think about that. There was a day when I was anything but godly. There was a day when I represented anything but God. But today, I have been invited to be not simply just his child, but I get to be his voice, his touch, his heart manifest to my world that they might look at me and say, if God would do that for them, then surely, he might consider that for me because, friend of mine, that is the invitation of Scripture. Come whosoever will and drink freely. Christ came that whosoever would believe. This call is to you who are listening and to those that God has commissioned you to reach. As I close today, I want you to remember that God's purpose is to restore health and to heal our wounds. His plans are for our welfare and hope, and His intimate knowledge of us assures us of His love. I would encourage you, trust in His plans. Embrace the identity he has given to us. Remember, you are no longer an outcast. But today, you can be called a child of God. That's encouraging. That's revelatory. You are no longer an outcast but you have been welcomed into relationship with the creator of everything. He loves you, and he desires to do a tremendous work through you. Will you keep pursuing him? Will you pursue your identity in Christ? Only you can decide that. 
but I would challenge you today. It's worth it. Why not keep pursuing? God bless you, and until next time, never give up, never stop, but chase your Creator. Continue with the pursuit. God bless you.